today I'm going to be answering one of the questions that I get asked the most. Where do I start? Hey there, it's Marian. It is Monday Moves and I am here to answer one of the questions that I get asked the most and that is, where do I start? Patients come to me or I get questions online and it may be about an exercise that they could have seen on Monday Moves or it could be an exercise that they see in a pamphlet. Is this where I start? Should I be starting here? And as a registered kinesiologist and a cancer movement therapist, I am all about finding the right place to start. But what I'm gonna tell you today is that movement starts with alignment. Now, that may not mean anything to you when you're thinking I'm going to tell you to start with the foundational moves or I'm going to start tell you to start with uh, stretching before you strengthen or my favorite is mobility then stability and then strengthening. But I want to dig a little deeper today to answer this question and say that you need to have alignment before you start with anything. This it came to me when I was thinking about this patient of mine and one would think that she is just the absolute best patient in the world because she was totally motivated. She came to me willing to do whatever it would take. She said she didn't care about the aches and the pain. She didn't care how much it was going to hurt. She wanted to get her life back. She wanted those activities back. She hated the limitations. She despised having to um, rely on others. She hated to ask for help. She hated that she was too tired at the end of the day to cook the way she wanted to cook. She hated ordering in food. I mean, anything that was different from what her life was like before her diagnosis, she didn't want anything to do with. But what I read in her body position and what I read in her movement evaluation was her issues with movement were stemming from an alignment issue and that alignment was not dealing with the anxiety and the overwhelm and the stress that comes not only from diagnosis and treatment but also from the physical limitations that occur as you're trying to get back to the life you want, getting into survivorship and this is where she was. She thought she would be further along the path and she wasn't there and she wasn't aligned. So we developed a plan and the absolute hardest thing in the plan was the first thing that we had to do was have her lie on my table and learn how to breathe. Yep, it was that simple. All we did was go through breathing strategies, but proper breathing strategies to make sure that she felt aligned in her body. So when I'm talking to you today about diaphragmatic breathing that's specific for cancer patients, we are talking about ensuring not only the benefits physically that are going to happen for you, but we are looking at the mind-body connection and looking to align you so you can move forward with the movement strategies that you need to meet your goals. Now, even though this patient was totally on board with moving forward, the tightness and the lack of mobility and the stress that she had in her body would not allow me to train her into what she needed to meet those physical goals. So we went through with diaphragmatic breathing. Now, fancy word, it's just all about breathing properly and I wanna go through a few pointers with you. I do have a video attached that's going to give you some more in-depth information on three different things. One, what's the diaphragm? How does it work and why is it so important? And two, what are the physical benefits of the proper breathing strategies for cancer patients? Three is what's that mind-body connection and where is that alignment with the energy and your spirit that's really going to be an overwhelming benefit to get you to where you want to be. So when I talk about the breathing techniques, 
I am not going to go specifically in to say how long your inhale should be, how long your exhale should be, because I truly believe everyone is different and that alignment that you will get from breathing will tell you where you should be with your breathing. Now, I base this also on the physical attributes of each person, your lung capacity. Everyone can be different. The tightness that you're going to have post-surgery, that is going to restrict some of the movement and how much and how long you can inhale and then if there's any pain with exhale. So let's look at the precautions first of all. I want to make sure you don't become dizzy when you're doing your breathing exercises. If you do, then you're gonna take a break and you will come back to them the next day and try them out, but no dizzy. Second of all, no pain. I don't want any pain in any part of your body with breathing. So I want to make sure that your spine is properly aligned and I want you to start this exercise if you can with lying on your back. There are exercises for breathing where you're lying on your tummy and they're fantastic, but not right after surgery, not if you have drains and not if you have incisions that haven't healed. So let's start on our back. If you can't get onto your back, then absolutely do it in a sitting position, but you will get more neural input if you're lying on your back and just the feedback that you're going to get with the strategies that we're going to use. So as I said, no time frame in number of seconds for inhale, exhale, holding your breath. We're going to start with regular breathing, but your focus is going to be on that breath in and the breath coming right to your tummy. Like my patient and how I was able to read where her stress was and how she was moving and why she needed this was because of the movement I saw in her upper chest and the movement in the shoulder area. Now, generally women will hold their stress sort of in this neck and upper trap area and when things are stressful, when there's anxiety, when there's overwhelm, this is the area that tightens up, but this is also the area that we need to relax and stretch and mobilize. So it's a double-edged sword that the stress of diagnosis and treatment actually tightens up those areas that we really need to work. So this breathing is so important. So the air comes in and it comes down to the tummy. I'm gonna move back just a little bit and see. Hand here, hand here. This is not moving, this is moving. So when you breathe in, no movement in the shoulders, no movement in the chest. You are going to inhale to expand the stomach and then as you exhale, and I like to exhale through my mouth, it just seems more cleansing for me, just getting the body in balance if I exhale through my mouth and that's when the stomach comes back down. Now you will see videos that show uh, people with weights on their chest and their stomach. I advise against the weights for you right now. I would like you to use something like a little foam block. I use them in strategies when we're doing uh, rehabilitation. They are just a number of ounces or grams. They're very light, but they're larger. And then you can see the movement. And that's gonna give you input visually You'll also feel that. That's why if your hands are on there, that's just fine as well because that's giving you the feedback that you need to know you're doing it well, your body feels it, and your mind aligns with your body to make sure that you are getting that feedback to know you're doing it properly and to know how you're feeling with that. The feeling should be in relaxation, in de-stressing, in feeling some expansion through the rib cage, lower rib cage. The core will be working. You will have better alignment with the spine. Digestion is better because of how the diaphragm works. The other benefit of diaphragmatic breathing for breast cancer patients is the help it gives with lymphedema. It helps to move the lymph through the body so Obviously, this is something we really want to keep close attention to with another helpful strategy 
with the risk factors associated with lymphedema after treatment. So let's just regroup for a minute. We don't want dizziness, no pain, and I want you to be aligned properly for your spine. If you need a little support for your head when you're lying down on your back, that's absolutely fine with your knees bent and your feet flat on the floor. I want you to use that input to let you know the best way for you to be breathing without the specifics of time frames. I want it relaxed, inhaling through the nose, out through the mouth if that helps you. And my eyes tend to close when I'm doing my proper breathing strategies. That's absolutely fine. The other thing is you can have light music on if that helps you get into a better state of calm. But I don't want something that's got too much of a beat because I don't want you to be breathing and timing with that beat. If the beat is off from your body's natural flow, it's going to hinder your energy process. If you have any questions about this, after you download the free video that's going to give you your knowledge is power part, as well as a video to just show you those movement strategies, then by all means, let me know. I'd love to talk you through it. I'd love to make sure that you're adding this as a really important strategy in your movement therapy. The other thing you can do is hit that subscribe button. I would love for you to be part of the Monday Moves family. I would love you to see each week what I'm bringing for you to help you with the movement therapy for the body and for the mind. So hit the subscribe button and I would love to see you next week. Have an awesome day.